My name is Sally. My parents want me to leave. They say there is no future for me here in Gaza. I'm a musician. I'm the only female member in my band and was banned by the Hamas government from performing in public. Gaza is a very conservative place. When I told my dad I wanted to study abroad, his answer was, when a man proposed to you, you can get married and travel with him. My name is Laura Bushnak and I'm a freelance photographer based in uh, Sarajevo. Uh, the work I'm showing uh, at Ort Gallery is part of my uh, long-term project titled I Read, I Write. I'm showing work from uh, Gaza and Saudi Arabia. It follows the story of different women from the region uh, and it goes into the details of their lives and how they used education to improve their lives. My name is Josephine Reichert. I'm the curator of this exhibition, I Read, I Write, by Laura Bushnack. Ort Gallery is an artist-led exhibition space based in Borsa Heath, Birmingham. This exhibition was on at Ort Gallery between the 30th of November 2019 to the 25th of January 2020. When I was programming uh, for 2019, I got in touch with Laura to see whether she was, would be interested to do um, a solo show. We really like exhibiting photography because we feel it's a very accessible medium. I also really liked this series that Laura's been working on over the past few years. It shares so many stories of women um, from ac across the Arab world and it was really interesting for me to bring those stories to Balsa Heath because it really resonates with so many local audiences. My name's Samantha Crankpod. I'm a ceramic artist and I'm also a workshop facilitator. Whatever the exhibition is, we kind of make it family friendly, you know, positive, because some of the subject matters can be quite hard hitting. Um, so we just try and have fun and have a positive outcome. What are these pictures of? Arabic. That's right, it's Arabic writing, isn't it? Yeah? So that's what we're going to have a little look at today. And to start off with, I thought we could do a little bit of a practice. We've got some felt tips on the table. And we've also got some tracing paper as well. Just in case you want to have a little practice. So once your air dry clay is dried, you can almost like, you could always get a sponge and put different textures on. And it will really pick up on the detail. So title is learning a new language. Learning a new language, that's not your own. It's like to trying to get blood from a stone. It's easier to save a corpse from a vulture than learning a whole new sentence structure. No doubt there is a great shift and it is not always easy to get the gist. In English, the verb follows a subject. No, I don't know what computer is doing. In English, the verb follows a subject. To do this in Urdu would be incorrect. A bus is a vehicle as we all know. A bus is a vehicle as we all know, but in Urdu it means stop and do not go. To suffer means you will experience bad things. But in Urdu is travel or the joy that it brings. 
The queen has terrors plucked from her domain. But in Urdu, terror means to a jet or a plane. Even when one masters a new language, the application can still need a bandage. But learn a language that's not your own, and you will find that your knowledge has grown. Thank you very much. I applied to a med school far away and was accepted one amazing day. A fortunate woman and by my family backed. Soon I was ready, there was nothing I lacked. We went to the departure point, we hugged and kissed. Then the blow fell, I was not on the list. So I wait here, tears dried like my mother's, trying to fathom our law which smothers my efforts to study for that qualification enabling me to support the health of my nation. Such a simple wish she can surely be granted, but for now I'm stuck in Gaza, confined, disenchanted. And for Abia, she's here, yes. She's in, she's in the segregated film festival too. As a journalist, I seek the truth even left my country with the hope of youth. On return, I'm dubbed open-minded, a condemnation. So are closed-minded women an asset to my nation? Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Welcome to Ort. Um, it's quite exciting to have Laura here, international guest flown in from Sarajevo. Um, I don't think she needs a lot of introduction. You'll have seen the exhibition that's been up for the last two months. And at the back, the big piece, we've decided because obviously tomorrow is the last day and we won't be able to keep it, that we we're gonna be really bold and just write on it because obviously the women are writing on the, on the photographs. So please leave your comments, feedback, anything like that on the, on the board as well. I'll stop there and I'll pass over to Laura. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm really glad to be with you. We just gave a talk at a college here uh, earlier and the student asked me, so why did you decide to become a photographer? And I told them, honestly, when I was 19 years old, I thought it was cool. You know, I looked cool to carry the camera. <laughs> I felt important. You know? uh, but I didn't know that I wanted to work in the journalism, but my studies in sociology made quite sense. I love the feeling of going in the streets and talking to people. And for me, it was very important to get the passport because with my travel documents, as a journalist, I couldn't do my job. Travel for me was a little bit of a nightmare. As a stateless person, I needed to provide so many papers because I have the right to ask for asylum wherever I go. So even like when I travel, I had to get a return ticket. One time, I didn't have the return ticket and I laugh about it. It's like I get the VIP treatment in the... Uh, in, in the airport. Um, so for me, it was very important to get the French passport to help me with my work. And in 2008, I got the French passport. I quit my job and I decided to start the project titled A Read I Write. When I researched the topic, um, basically in a UN report, it says that 50% of Arab women cannot read or write. And, it's, and I was quite curious, I wanted to start a project, basically, if, if we have 50% of women who cannot read or write, and are, they are not involved in the process of change, particularly in the political uh, process, how can we uh, advance the, the, the region? 